Ayubowan, Vanakam, Namaste, Adlam Alekum. Good morning, everybody. Uh, sorry for the little hitch, but uh, I'm, I'm so grateful. So first and foremost, thank you so much for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to be a part of this great event conducted in commemoration of the International Youth Day. As for the agenda, my task here is to deliver the keynote address on youth engagement for global action, set a tone for this conference, so to say. Like I mentioned in the little teaser, if you all had seen it, uh, I, which I did with the team, I will simply say before thinking of going global, let's try to be local. Wherever in the world you are, why do I say this? One reason is because this is a globally connected moment. Whether you are at local or global, the impact that you could make can definitely be at both levels. And the second reason is we no longer can deliver these four solutions. We as global citizens need solutions that suit and addresses individual needs and rights, which are very much related to our particular local situation. I, so therefore, let me say, I, I took a bit of liberty to make some adjustments to the topic, which I hope you will be interested, still interested to hear. But by doing this uh, in any, any way, I'm not asking you all to not to dream big. Do dream big but start where you could start or act, which is usually finding solutions to small issues which create big impact on individual lives and at community level. And most of the time, these are what later become global ideas for change. So I will spend the next 15, 20 minutes on three key areas. Where are we in the 21st century? What and how you could engage? and why taking action for change is so important. I know I've uh, added a few extra words to this whole conversation. One reason for that is that there's a lot of action, but how much of it brings positive change and how relevant and impactful those are for our 21st century is something that we have avoided unpacking. So um, if, there's a possibility, I think, uh, yeah, I can see. Okay, if you move on to the next slide. And uh, yeah, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just keep these slides. These slides are merely for um, uh, the audience to just get an uh, idea what I'm trying to talk about. I am not talking uh, or talking mainly on what is available on the slides. So if you want to keep something in your mind of what I have spoken today, the five slides which are being shared would be adequate, I think. So, oh. What do people, especially young people, want in life today? And especially more than ever before. Um, and uh, since there were several mentions about volunteerism, I, I don't want to digress. But one thing I've also decided that I no longer am keen on giving some spiel about how to become a true volunteer or a citizen because I've realized we pass that age and stage to look at those elements as selfless examples. To me now, yeah, keep the, uh, keep the second one, the next one. To me now, engagement seems like another platform created to achieve success in life whether it's your interest to live long or healthy or as a famous person loved and liked uh, by many or a, as a rich person goes with many comforts, whether the gains are materialistic or not. Still, it has a strong link to one's personal interest in life. 
And if that's what drives and motivates people to commit for positive change at large, then be it. And I think it's important for us to be aware of it. So when Mahesh and the team reached out to me, I really wondered on a Sunday morning, why would a young person want to listen to me? Uh, almost 50 year old, closer to 50. I am not a youth idol, no, am I a singing or a movie or a sports star? And I am not a YouTuber or a blogger who is being followed by many to say the least. And I thought, what do I have with me to offer? Then I thought after 25 years in various careers, I definitely have engaged with youth and maybe has some understanding of what they mean when they say going global or rather thinking big. So let me start by sharing something I thought would be appropriate for all of us since we are at the beginning of this three day conference that I'm sure would offer the time to think and plan wide and deep. So there was this young man, if I, I'm not so sure whether you all have heard this before, but uh, this is something which uh, had been said before. Um, who was in his early youth, when asked whom you want to be, he declared his desire to become a great writer. When asked to define what does great mean to him, he said, I want to write stuff that the whole world will read stuff that people will react to on a truly emotional level, stuff that will make them scream, cry, howl in pain and anger. And when asked where has he arrived today, he said he now works for a giant tech company writing error messages. So has he arrived? So, I, I wanted to bring this because how you see and envision greatness of going, going global is what we need to understand. As a teacher, a parent of a young person, a mentor or a supervisor, uh, something that I always used to say is well done is more important than well said. At the same time, if you are unclear about why you did what you did and whether it created a positive impact or just gave you your much desired 15 minute fame, then ask yourself, is this what you call change you want the humanity to enjoy? Knowing why we do what we do is extremely important to be self-aware and being true to yourself, at least if you cannot be to others, is the next important aspect in life. What motivates and drives you to do what you do is critical. The continuous dichotomous life that the world is leading is something we all need to be aware of in order for us to be clear about where the changes are needed or where do we want to make a change. So when you, when you look at youth as a collective force, force, you are more or less one fourth or sometimes one third of the population. Most of the time regarded as the heart and the soul of any nation as well as global. Therefore, I reiterate once again, you need to ask why you engage in what you engage in. Be clear about it. If it's not in your gut, or sometimes we say belly, please don't con yourself. Engage in a cause which you feel you can genuinely commit and want to make a difference. Engagement is not a thought or an adjective, it's a verb, it's a doing word. So before thinking on actions at global level, can we look at local actions and actions for change? If I mention names uh, such as Nelson Mandela or Martin Luther King or Mother Teresa or even A.R. Rahman, or in today's context, whether it's Malala Yousafzai or Greta Thunberg or even boy band BTS and ask from you where did they start their work or for whom did they work for or their target audience was, 
they all work for their local people and they were or are clear of the change they wanted to make in their own territory, at least at the beginning, if not for all their lives. It was the impact that thinking brought inspiration to others across the world and created a global momentum. The world would reach, according to the current estimates, 8.5 billion people by 2030 up from 7.3 billion in 2015. The fastest growing demographic will be the elderly, with the population of people over 65 years old at 1 billion and youth at 1.3 billion by 2030. This is a quick picture of demographic transition that we all are facing today. And therefore, life and living cannot be business as usual. If I say, boy, don't we know it very well today, living in an unprecedented time of global pandemic, change in our thinking, change in the way we work, change in how we grasp our information and how we use our knowledge has become paramount. And overnight, many of us were asked to be tech geeks and operate as, as if we were in space. If that didn't make us think that change or adapt is the only way to survive, what more do we need? If I quote somebody called William Ruckelhaus, the first administrator of the US Environmental Protection Agency, starting in 1970, said, and I quote, nature provides a good lunch, but only if we control our appetite. Today, exactly after 50 years, a stark reality rather than a statement. When an extra one billion joins the earth, it's now clear that only if we limit our desires, we can enjoy our aspired and planned, long, happy and healthy life. So I'm asking you all, where should we opt to make changes? This is my second point, like knowing what you do, why you do, Identify clearly whether it's local or global, the challenge at hand is more about our desires, our wants, and does this invade some others' rights and needs? Can we have the space to be inclusive and leave no one behind by ensuring every individual's rights are protected? Is this what we want when we say global action? In order for us to clearly identify the entry points for action and for social change, shall we move to the next slide, please? It's important for each of you to know the socio-ecological model that we all are living and working in, which most of us now have started using as a template for our interventions. It also indicates that in order for us to act or have the ability to act correctly, things need to start from our unawareness being addressed through information, knowledge, skills, and tapping into our beliefs and our values. Once a person is aware, if possible, move to the next slide, please. Then you need to have the right kind of influence, the right kind of social support, the communication to reach the next step, where your leadership, your collective efficacy, your social capital needs to be strengthened by your attitudes and behaviors. And then if you want to make a change, that will enable or will persuade you to act. That's where the engagement comes in. That's where you feel like you have the ability to act in order for joining the process of social change. Then we come to the other little known giant and sometimes I feel that this is what we are lacking most of the time. Uh, and especially to know whether our actions are correct or not, which is empathy. What is empathy? It is our ability to understand and share the feelings of another. They say empathy is naturally hardwired into our brain and when harnessed, plays a crucial role in innovation, 
change making or solving systemic problems. But when put into practice, empathy means so much more. It means being able to grasp the many sides of today's complex problems and the capacity to collaborate with others to solve them. It means being as good at listening to the ideas of others as articulating your own. It means being able to lead a team one day and participate as a team member the next. Empathy enables ethical action, decision making and problem solving. Empathy will also allow us to understand that we are the cause and the solution of where we are today. There are a few slides I'm sure they will be able to share with you all later on. So I'm moving on to the last uh, few points. So where are we today? Across the world, we are now made to understand that we all need to be, or rather we are, in a knowledge-based economy rather than an agrarian or an industrial economy where your knowledge and specialized skills are more important. Go a little bit up, up, before that, yeah, and okay, next one, oh, no, go back, down, and the next one, if you go to the next one, right, okay. Um, where your knowledge and specialized skills are more important than your manual labor or your ability to move and craft physical items. We have also come to terms that we cannot talk about social change without understanding the strong economic hinge that directly affects and drives the social fabric in every country. If we expect youth of today, which are you people to engage productively, what do you require? You need accurate data and information or evidence, knowledge and skills. Yet in most parts of our world, how do young people acquire information, knowledge, skills? Most of it is based upon the education system each country has established, which I believe is still not an adequate stage to address the needs of youth nor the youth we need. During the past six months, the digital universe may have grown exponentially. And what does this mean? According to recent studies, it shows many of the jobs that youth will do in future are not even there today. And they'll have to use technology that hasn't been invented to find solutions for the problems that haven't emerged yet. So the plain truth is that without constant innovation, we will not be solving problems and our actions could pass, pass as waste of time than being with worthwhile. So innovation is my next point. In a sense, this tells us preparing to address the challenges in the 21st century isn't just about having an interest to make a change or having access to technology or skills to drive the global economy for better development outcomes. But having access to technology is for creativity, cultural awareness, problem solving, innovation, civic engagement, communication, collaboration, exploration, productivity, accountability. And to do this, you need to make your every engagement as dynamic as the world around us. And we all need to have updated information, tools and knowledge, which will allow us to have the right attitude as well as aptitude to support harnessing the needs of 21st century. In a world of increasing proximity and complexity, how well we do, whether in the classroom, or in the boardroom will depend on how well we forge and navigate partnerships and relationships. If we can empathize, then we can communicate, then we can collaborate, then we can cohesively lead. We can solve problems for ourselves and for each other, no matter who we are or what we do. In conclusion, let me reiterate that it's high time we start thinking and working for the local changes 
that we can clearly see and is in need, be it with policies, systems, or services, or socially, culturally, politically, or scientifically. While creating momentum through mobilizing and enabling the communities to join the path to creative positive change in their own daily lives and in the development of their communities. Finally, this would enable better and targeted investment for sustainable peace and development for people and the planet, which eventually will have large opportunities for production and consumption today, but also creates expectation. So for all the young girls and boys who have joined today, just wanted to stay, say, yeah, stop looking for happiness in the same place you lost it. I'm sure many of you know where you would have lost your happiness. So move on, find new paths, since happiness is what we all ultimately search for in each of our lives. Continue doing what makes you happy and content, as long as they are ethical, respectful, and do no harm to anyone else. Let's join hands to make sure. Yeah, keep that slide that every young person reaches his soulful potential. May you all have a successful conference and a great life. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.